born with Down syndrome and a life-threatening heart condition, Gami is in the care of his 21-year-old surrogate mother, who lives south of Bangkok. Patramon Chambua was paid to carry twins by an Australian couple. They rejected Gami and returned home with his healthy sister. It was supposed to be a surrogacy agreement that would ease the financial strain on Patramon, who has two other children. Because of our poverty and debts, the money offered to me was a lot. In my mind, we could educate our children and we could repay our debt. Online donations and help from charities should ensure that Gami receives the medical attention he urgently needs. His surrogate mother can't understand why his Australian parents have deserted him. I felt sorry for the boy. I felt this is the adult's fault. Who is he to have to endure something like this, even though it's not his fault? I love him. He was in my belly for nine months. He's like my child. I love him like my own. The international storm over the seven-month-old baby boy left behind in Thailand has taken a shocking new turn, with revelations today that the boy's Australian biological father is a convicted pedophile. The West Australian man accused of abandoning baby Gammy in Bangkok has twice been convicted and imprisoned for indecently dealing with children under the age of 13. The news has provoked questions about the lack of regulation of the international surrogacy trade. It's also exposed the weakness of Australian laws that ban commercial surrogacy here, but largely ignore what happens overseas. Adam Harvey takes up the story. This is seven-month-old Gammy, the baby at the centre of an international controversy. After his surrogate mother revealed that he'd been left behind in Thailand. His biological parents from Western Australia took his twin sister, but not Gammy, who has Down syndrome and a hole in his heart. They decided they would take the girl. I felt sorry for the boy. It was like, this is adult's fault. And who is he to have to endure something like this, even though it's not his fault? Why does he have to be abandoned when the other baby has it easy? And he has to endure all this difficulty like this. This was the parents last December, waiting in a Thai hospital to collect their girl. Today their Bunbury home is besieged by media as the scandal surrounding the parents escalates. More detail is now emerging about the parents who are introduced via an online dating agency. David Farnell travelled to China in June 2004 to meet Wendy Lee. They married four months later. Today it has emerged that Gammy's biological father, David John Farnell, is a convicted pedophile. Farnell, an electrician, was sentenced to three years jail in 1997 for sexually molesting two girls under the age of 13. He was later charged with six counts of indecent dealings with a child under the age of 13. The offences were said to have occurred over a 10-month period in the mid-1990s. Farnell was found guilty a second time and received an 18-month jail term. The case of Baby Gammy has become a major international news story. In Thailand today, surrogate mother Pataramon Janbua held a press conference to express her shock at the latest revelations. I was startled and worried. Right now, I'm still worried. She was asked if she wanted the baby girl brought back to Thailand. If she's happy, then I, as a mother, am also happy. I don't want to bring her back to suffer or anything. A mother would never want her child in trouble. But if she really cannot go on living there, then I'm very happy having her back in my arms. A Bangkok correspondent, Sam Hawley, today spoke to a former employee of the surrogate agency who was the go-between dealing with the biological parents and the surrogate mother. She asked for her identity to be concealed. She says there was confusion about what to do with baby Gammy once they realised he had Down syndrome. It was just, just nobody don't know what to do. And then, like, let's say, if they 
decide to uh, abort one baby, then what about the other one? Nobody can guarantee that you will still have the other one. So the, the decision just cannot be made. It just is just no choice. That because of course, me, the doctor here, and my export, we have to leave everything up to the couple. We just couldn't find a solution. We just don't know if this happened, then what we're going to do. If this happened, what we're going to do? Until the surrogate came up with the solution. Which is like, I was very impressed with her solution. What was her solution? She said, I will take the dark babies. Nobody, no, the, I, I will take the boy, like nobody need to worry. One day the couple told me that they, they just couldn't take it anymore. They want to go home. Their relative, one of them, taking care of the boy. And they want both babies back. And because they, they say that they're just running out of money. They cannot make any more 75 return the babies so they don't have to make any more payment. 730 has spoken to the parents on two occasions. They insisted they never knew about a baby boy. Today, a complete about face. A family friend has told the Bunbury Mail that the parents knew of Gammy and his congenital heart condition and left him behind because doctors said he would not survive. The parents also said they were heartbroken about leaving Gammy but had to escape Thailand while the baby was still in hospital because of the country's military coup. The Thai surrogacy industry does not require any background checks on prospective parents. Thailand hasn't had any law on surrogacy at all, so therefore no law concerning background checks. It, they just, it hasn't existed. But neither do most Australian states, which permit only unpaid surrogacy arrangements within Australia. Victoria requires a criminal check and a child safety check to be undertaken. It's not mandatory in other places. Uh, but what's required with surrogacy, whatever state you go in, is that you must have judicial oversight. At the end of the day, you need a judge to approve the surrogacy arrangement as being in the best interest of the child. Outside Australia, it's illegal for residents of New South Wales, Queensland and the ACT to pay a surrogate. I understand the principle, which is that you want to have the same standards at home as abroad and, and that we are trying to establish good practice in surrogacy, but I think blunt criminal prohibitions like that don't help anybody. They basically drive evasion, they drive secrecy, they mean that people are paying money to brokers, they're not telling the truth to their health practitioners, they're not telling the truth to government authorities or maybe even to their children. Uh, and, and I think it, it drives practice underground and it's really counterproductive in the long run. International surrogacy law expert Jenny Milbank says this case could have a devastating effect on surrogacies already in train. I'm very concerned um, that this case, which is a, an exceptional case on many, many levels, is going to be taken as a, an example to then set in place a series of general rules. And certainly I think there are many parents, in, intended parents in Thailand right now, who'd be very concerned about whether or not they can bring their children home. And a crackdown in Thailand won't stop international surrogacy. In recent years we've seen a lot of Australians travel to India and then more recently to Thailand. Uh, if Thailand closes down, people will move on to the next destination. Um, and the international surrogacy players, um, some of them are transnational players, they're already setting up in places like Mexico and elsewhere. It'll be up to West Australian Child Protection Authorities to decide whether Gammy's sister stays with her Australian parents. I'll leave it to them. If they think there is a risk to this child, they'll take action. If they don't think there's a risk to this child, they won't.